Now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, Aurora has made a lot of changes in wake of the death of Elijah McClain. Today, they'll be talking about a new drug first responders could be using. Staffing shortages are impacting the return to school, how some families are having to make do with fewer bus drivers. And now that we have the new owners for the Broncos, we're learning a little more about the roles they'll be taking on ahead of game day, Saturday, the first preseason game yeah. here in uh, Denver. Got yeah, their own jerseys mm -hmm. there. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Lisa Hidalgo tracking another hot day ahead. We did have a little bit of a Broncos sunrise earlier. It was we nice. did. Yeah. yeah, and there's still a little hint of blue and orange out there. Here's the view from our Fort Morgan camera up uh, to the northeast, and you're going to find 60s primarily across most of the neighborhoods. Uh, a few low 70s. Winds are southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So it's a pretty calm, clear start to our Thursday morning. And it is going to get hot again. We're near 80 degrees by about 10 o'clock, closer to 90 by lunch. And then we're going to hit highs later today between 3 and 5, right around 95 to about 98 degrees. So we're much closer to that triple digit mark than we are to some of our normal highs. In fact, uh, Denver today, 98, Greeley, 99, 70s and 80s for the mountains. Now, our high country could pick up a few more storms today, but across the plains, it's going to stay dry today. The record high is 97, so we're going to get close to tying it, if not breaking it. And we're going to stay in the 90s through Sunday. It gets a lot cooler next week. I'll show you that on our Super 7 Day in just a few minutes. And we still have some activity out to the north side of town from a crash at 70th in Washington. We also have some activity still out to the west side of town with this rollover crash along westbound I-70 right there at Lookout Mountain from the uh, Morrison exit. The drive time is about 10 to 15 minutes longer than normal. Take a look from just earlier Air Tracker 7. So this is the scene right here. You see just the right lanes closed with the right, the center and left uh, center and left lane, the ones that are open. And we do have that rollover crash. It's still in place right in here, so they still are going to have to roll that car back over. This is Highway 40 coming off that Morrison exit. That can get you up to the top of Lookout Mountain and get you through there a little bit faster. The rest of the drive doesn't look too bad for us. We do have that one crash over here at uh, Washington and 70th, so it is causing some delays. 68th gets you over to York, and then that gets you around it maybe a little bit faster. But the rest of the drive, very typical stuff for you right now. Well, the drug ketamine has earned a pretty bad reputation here. It's the powerful sedative Elijah McLean was injected with before he died nearly three years ago. The city of Aurora banned its use when the investigation into McLean's death ramped up in 2020. And Denver 7's Jessica Crawford is joining us now with what we know about a proposed alternative drug that they'll be talking about today. Yes, so Aurora is discussing droperidol, and it's not new. It's something that's already widely used, even by Denver EMS. And here are some facts about it. It's an antipsychotic and a rapid sedative used in intensive care treatment and where agitation, aggression, or violent behavior are present. Aurora City Council is discussing the use of that drug today as an alternative to ketamine. In 2020, Aurora City Council banned the city's emergency responders from using ketamine during an independent investigation. It showed paramedics and properly evaluated McLean's condition before injecting him and incorrectly estimated his weight. Medics gave him 500 milligrams of the drug. That's a dose recommended for a 200 pound person. McLean was just 143 pounds. He would then go into cardiac arrest before dying in the hospital a few days later. Aurora City Council agenda says the city is contemplating the use of droperidol because as a, sedative, as a sedative, it can be difficult for emergency responders to transport and to help patients if they're violent or agitated and not in a sedated state. And it helps EMS providers safely determine the kind of care that a patient needs. Droperidol also has its side effects, so doctors say they do have to be aware of heart complications associated with it. So like ketamine, uh, first responders have to be very careful to evaluate the person's weight before they administer that drug. In Aurora, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. All right, yeah. Thank you, Jessica. This morning, we're learning more about which what initiated the FBI search at the former president's Florida estate. Newsweek reports back in June, someone told investigators there may be more classified documents at Mar-a-Lago after the National Archives retrieved 15 boxes earlier this year. Two months later, federal agents were back at the resort with a search warrant for documents Trump allegedly took improperly from the White House. FBI Director Christopher Wray was asked for details about the search and whether he's concerned about possible threats to his agents from Trump supporters. That's not something that I can talk about, so I'd refer you to the department. 
Um, as to the issue of threats, um, I will say that I'm always concerned about violence and threats of violence against law enforcement. Meanwhile, yesterday in New York, uh, former President Trump pleaded the fifth and refused to answer questions during a deposition in a civil case involving the Trump Organization's real estate dealings. Sources tell ABC News the only question he answered was, what is your name? Well, it is back to school today for thousands of kids in Thornton, Brighton, Commerce City, Greeley and other cities. The 27J School District is opening a new school today in Commerce City called South Lawn Elementary School, which will include art and music classes, playgrounds and a turf field. In West Greeley, there's a new pre-K through 8 school called Toynton Academy of Pre-Engineering. A nice campus there and students at Greeley West High School will be in their new school today. There's still construction and fencing around the old campus because workers are doing some asbestos abatement before it's finally demolished. But as those schools prepare to welcome students back to class today, there is a problem across many districts of getting students to campus in a safe and timely fashion. There is a shortage of bus drivers statewide affecting routes and schedules for many families. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta is live with how 27J specifically is handling these limited resources. So it's a really big day for a 27 J, right? First day back to school, a lot of students excited, maybe some not so much, but because of those bus driver shortages that you just mentioned, some of those students are actually on a wait list to be able to even get on a bus to then get them to school. So in other school districts across Colorado, we've heard of those thousand dollar signing bonuses, those really competitive wages, but at 27 J that just isn't a possibility. Unfortunately, we can't compete and that's because we just don't have the funding that's needed. Now, officials at 27J say in order to be considered fully staffed in that bus driver department, they, le they need rather at least another 20 drivers with those CDL and non CDL drivers licenses. The school district also needs another 21 paraprofessionals or bus stop monitors uh, to support students when they're on those actual buses. The school district had similar issues last year. They actually had to cancel or tried canceling as little routes as possible and ended up pulling anyone with the proper license to drive a bus. It's something they say they're probably going to need to do again this year. We have uh, a number of people in our transportation department in addition to school bus drivers. We have mechanics, we have schedulers, we have uh, office clerical staff. And on days when we are really short, uh, those people put their tools away and they grab a bus route and they drive those routes. And on the topic of school buses, Colorado actually recently passed a $65 million of funding initiative for this electric bus grant program. Meanwhile, the federal government also really thinking about this new kind of technology, these electric buses. It's actually offering a half billion dollar in rebates for school districts that go ahead and buy some of these electric buses. They have an application process that's open through next Friday for any district that wants to take advantage of that. We're in Thornton this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, number seven. Today is your last day to see the Broncos at open training camp. It's going to be a big one, too. It's a joint practice with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, a little later practice than normal today. It's from 11 to 1, so the gates open at 10 a.m. The two teams will play their first preseason game this Saturday at Empower Field. Meanwhile, yesterday marked an historic moment for Broncos country and really the entire league. The Broncos new owners introduced themselves. Here they are all except for Lewis Hamilton, who's in the middle of his Formula One season. Melody Hobson, chair of the Starbucks board. Dr. Condoleezza Rice, former secretary of state, became the league's first two black female team owners. And uh, we know now how uh, the new owners will run things at least a little bit here. Uh, Rob Walton's son-in-law, Greg Penner, will be the CEO. Uh, one of his first priorities will be to hire a team president to help with day-to-day -day decisions. There will be no formal board of directors. Um, and Joe Ellis will be taking on an advisory role this season. The new owners also spoke to the players before practice yesterday, kind of sharing their vision for the future. And safety Justin Simmons says he was impressed and appreciates the diversity. What an inspiration, you know, I think for so many people. I mean, there's, there's little girls out here whose dad plays on the team, and 
when they can look up, you know, ownership of the Broncos, they can see someone that looks just like them. So our Denver 7 sports team will have the latest from training camp tonight on Denver 7 News. Well, can you put a price tag on safety on the road? General Motors may be doing just that. The new and expensive subscription the company is now requiring for every new car buyer. Plus, costs are dropping now on just about everything, but economists aren't sure inflation will follow when your budget might actually get to breathe again.